All right, Tony. Hello. I usually start this with a swear word. But okay. I feel this is a very more serious <laughs> episode. <laughs> but I just want to put a disclaimer out to people that are watching this. Do not comment anything bad on this because this is actually this woman's life and I don't want you to get any bad shit for it, basically. I'm just the trolls anyway, it's all right. <laughs> you get it quite bad then? Aye. Aye? Oh, aye. How? Like it's a, it's not like you're, it's not like you're going out there and telling lies. But people, because people have not got proof, they're like, hmm, what happened to innocent until proven guilty? Okay. Sorry that you didn't record that happening. <laughs> I know. Do you know what I mean? I know. Jesus My God. son should be enough. Aye. Wait, I find that crazy. Do you want to tell me what you were just telling me before? Um, I my my son is my abuser's son. <laughs> I I can't believe that man. Um, so see so when this is obviously don't take this in the wrong way, but some people would mm-hmm. when they look at which obviously that's your abuser's son. Mm-hmm. So see sometimes when you're looking at your son, oh I see my abuser all the saying, time. Like do you get oh, kind of like PTSD with it? Mm-hmm. Aye. My son lived with my mum for five years of his life. Really? The first five years of his life because I could be. Yeah. I couldn't look at him. Until I had dealt with my trauma enough to be like, well, he might look like him, but he's no him. He's not at all, no. Like, it was it was weird. I was kind of like, I can't do this. Like, when my son turned 11 months, I was like that to my mum, you need to take him. I can't do this. And she was like... What what do you mean? Like what do you mean? And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't look at him. Mm-hmm. And then she took him. I obviously ended up in having like a really bad addiction and stuff like that. And then finally got my life together in twenty twenty. Yeah. And got him back and stuff like that in twenty twenty one. And then that's us right, ever since. Obviously, like. At such a young age, just having a child alone mm-hmm. is very stressful, but you are also dealing with the fact that you had been abused. Aye. Like, that's that's of your life, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, both of them coming together would Aye. drive anyone insane. It just would. Aye, it got Aye. to the point where when my son was gating, like, I could switch off to it. You just numbed to it? Aye. Like, I, I could just switch off to it, and it was as if he wasn't even gating. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I realised, I was like, I don't want it to get to the point where I'm, like, neglecting him. Yeah. So I was like, the best thing for me to do is give him to somebody that can care for him the way that I should be able to. Yeah. And that's obviously why I was like, I don't want to, like, I never wanted to hurt him. So I was like, he needs to go with somebody that's going to be able to, like, be a mammy figure in his life yeah. until I can sort my shit out. I just didn't expect it to take as long as uh, it did. No, of course, man, look, we'll delve into it. Mm-hmm. That's a stupid story, but see, see my see my, my husky, mm-hmm. right? Um, I had to go collect him earlier because see his mum, like, it just wanted fuck all to do with him. It literally just was, I don't know why this came out of my head. <laughs> this is a completely irrelevant story, but I just find it funny. <laughs> but I, I had to go get my husky because basically the mum had went, nah, that's it, mm-hmm. numb, don't care about him, and was like basically just pawing him away or like try to bite him or not. That's just a wee stupid story, if I tell you that. Nothing to do with what's going on here, so <laughs> ideal. <laughs> right. We can contextualise what we've just discussed there, but this is more, I want you to more tell it, obviously, because mm-hmm. it's not my story, but I Aye. obviously know of it, but you were abused from a very young age. Oh, I, I was 12, just turning 13. Mm-hmm. It was, um, like you were, who, see the person you were going with, what age were they at the time? He told me that he was 16, right. I later found out that he was actually 19. When I was twelve. Nineteen. Aye. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot he was an adult. Yeah. Or well, like he's a grown man. Aye. A fully fledged adult and I mm. was a baby, basically. Yeah. Um but I know I st- I dogged school one day. Right. As you do when you're a teenager. Obviously. <laughs> dogged school and wanted to get as far away from my school as possible, right? So me and my pal, we just walked, continued walking for ages. Well, what felt like ages, it wasn't really that long. And ended up in Queen's Park. Right. And obviously, you know, Govan Hill's connected to Queen's Park. And we were sitting, I don't know if you know Queen's Park at all, but see like the Govan Hill side. Right. See when you come in the main gates and there's like stairs at the top. We're sitting at a bench like next to the stairs. And this obviously group of boys came along. We're talking about it as whatever else. And then that's how, that's the very first time that I met Thomas. Mm-hmm. And... It just kind of went through there. Like, we just started dogging school every day, gone down. We'd meet up with them, 
for the first like month of mine and his relationship it was brilliant it was like a normal really well what i thought was a normal relationship like mm. obviously i wasn't going in there every day at that point like i was still going to school and stuff and then <clears throat> about a month in he was like that's when i need you to do something for me and i was like what is it and he was like i can't really tell you the now and i was like right so we get in his cousin's car and we drove to Partick, and then he told me, and I was like, I don't, like, this isn't something I want to do. And he was like, well, you don't really have a choice. I've already told him that you're going to do it. What was it they were going to do? I was to have sex with him in exchange for money. What wage was the guy? Oh, he was like in his 30s or something. Mm. Aye. So by that point, I had turned 13. Mm. So went up the stairs to this flat, got haunt money, obviously was raped, and then... Went back down the stairs and haunt Thomas money and it just started for there. And then at its worst it was thirty people a day I was seeing. Thirty people? Yep. Thirty people a day. For all different walks of life. It's mental. Jesus Christ, man, that is nuts. It's mental. Nobody ever like I think people don't realise that it does actually happen on your doorstep, like you always hear about it in films and documentaries and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, it'll never happen to me, it'll never happen to me, I'll never know anybody that's, like, went through it. But it it, it does, it happens, like, your neighbour could be a pervert, do you know what I mean? There is, my neighbour is, 100%. Looks <laughs> like Santa Claus, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> See, so, did you not feel in any way, at the time, obviously you're very young, mm-hmm. was it you and your friend that got abused at the same time? Just me. Just you? Just me. And could you not, obviously I know it's so fucking hard, but did your mum, anybody not have any form of incline, like what was going on? My mum worked all the time. My mum was hardly ever in the house, so she worked all the time. Um, and I just done what I wanted, basically. I like, really I, like, my mum was at work, she couldn't come looking for me when I was mm-hmm. dogging school. Don't get me wrong, the odd time I didn't know that she was half working, she would walk down Govan Hill and grab me, <laughs> but... <laughs> And take me back up to the school, but at first she never had any kind of inkling that that's where I was because I was always going for registration ah. so that I would be in. And then like, I never had a phone. I was never allowed a phone. Mm-hmm. My mum doesn't believe in like Wayne's having phone. She's like, well, why? Why do you need a phone if you've got a school? Aye. Do you know what I mean? Like now, don't get me wrong. No, my sister's got one purely for what happened to me, but. At the time, my mum was like, you're going to school, what do you need a phone for? Mm-hmm. Like, you go out with your pals, you don't need a phone. So. Your mum obviously assumed it's just point A to point B, do you know what I mean? You're I, going to school, you're going to come back, then you're going to get with your friends mm-hmm. and come home. Right. right, and that obviously wasn't what was happening. But yeah. I obviously had it fair as well, because he used to, like, say to me, oh, I'll do this, that, the next thing to your mum if you tell her, or your sister because it was he knew it was only me my mum and my sister in the house he knew that like my mum and dad weren't together like my mum didn't have a boyfriend like it was just us three in the house and he knew that so he would obviously use that to make you feel mm-hmm. obviously worried about what's going to happen to your family so there's no chance you're going to grass him and i he made me feel trapped basically yeah. like if i left he was going to hurt my mum and if i stayed i was going to continue to get abused Mm-hmm. So I was like stuck between a rock and a hard place. I was like, mm, there's yeah. no easy way out of this, really. No, you, plus that just shows how much a great person you are. The fact that you prioritise your family over what you don't need. Do you know what I mean? Always. Yeah. Always. Like my mum and my sister are my world. Mm. <laughs> like I can tell like how very protective of your sister you are. Mm. I see you in socials and stuff like that. Oh, I. She's like, she's like my Wayne. <laughs> she's, I always call her my oldest Wayne. <laughs> uh, that's brilliant, man. But he... I think the thing with like grooming and stuff like that, mm-hmm. they always, always figure out your weakest points and then they will manipulate you into thinking that, like, because at one point he manipulated me into thinking that my mum hated me and didn't want me to live there. Because that's a, that's a thing, like, that's a loved one, that's somebody you look up mm-hmm. to, he's going to make you hate them, mm-hmm. therefore you have no escapism. Right, it's trying to isolate you, it's like mm-hmm. narcissism, trying to isolate you for everybody. So that you then solely depend on them. Yeah. And I did at one point. But... But you're only young, like, and you're going through so much tra- trauma. Mm-hmm. There's no way you can even comprehend, like, what's going, going on. Well, 
I was a very sheltered one. <laughs> like yeah. my mum, I didn't know what sex was, didn't know what drugs were. Like I was a very, very sheltered one. Did you not like, get the see you during school or not? Do you remember? Did you not get the mad thing where they show the sex video and all that? I don't think I'd had it at that point. Did you not? No. Don't, I don't think so. We got showed it like, this is very weird, and maybe my teacher was just a creep, but we got showed it at like primary six. I, I remember getting like some sort of sex education uh, in primary school, but it was never anything like... Like that exclusive? I Basically they just put up like a big porno for us to watch, that was it. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. Don't <laughs> say that! <laughs> <laughs> But big no, Lana like, Rhodes on the <laughs> <laughs> big screen. <laughs> but no, like I'd never, I didn't know that. Like I knew that obviously you had to have sex to have a baby. Yeah. Like I knew that, but I didn't know like the in detail stuff about it. Did you like, say you didn't know like the consent? Is that I, right? Am I, is that, I, I basically yeah. like I didn't know that you had to be all right with it as well. Yeah, both comfortable with what's going on. Yeah. It, like because I always just thought like obviously growing up it's like mom and a dad and like dad's the boss and you're mm. always scared of your dad do you know what i mean so like i just took that as well it's the guy's decision then yeah i was never taught that obviously mm. but just feel like dad being the boss and like mm. you're you're scared of your dad and stuff like that yeah. like that's just what i took it's the dominant man thing mm -hmm. do you what would you say then for school wise like how they could show that Definitely towards young women. I think they need to start opening up more about grooming right. and like sexual abuse and stuff like as children, because mm -hmm. I don't think it's spoke about enough. Yeah, and also like a child could literally mm -hmm. be going through that and not knowing that uh -huh. they're getting abused. I didn't know that I was getting abused. Mm -hmm. Like for the first couple of months, like I just thought it was normal, and it wasn't until like I was seeing my pals at school and their boyfriends or like just other relationships in school, and I was like, but mine's isn't like that. At first, I thought there was something wrong with their relationship, but then okay. see the mayor that I seen it, I was like, "But I would like to be treated like that." Yeah, nice. Like how you're I, both meant to be treated. Been nice able to hold your boyfriend's horn and like yeah. give my cuddle or whatever. Like I was love well, essentially. I like I was never allowed to do any of that. Mm. Like, but I think obviously he's Slovakian, right? So like, I'm not saying that this is everybody. I'm just talking about him and his family specifically it could be like a social norm over there I, yeah. like in their culture from what i seen it's very much women are nothing mm. and the guys are everything like you're seen and not heard you're at their feet I'll aye. Call them. Aye. oh i like when his pals and him used to come in after being out or whatever doing whatever it was that they were doing there had to be some sort of food made regardless if it was say, like picky bits mm -hmm. or if it was like a meal there had to be something or there was hell to pay uh, the plates are getting <laughs> smashed off faces I, like, that, like i've seen hot coffee being poured there lasses before like i it's mental mm -hmm. did like, you see the stuff in <clears throat> russia um it's like they're talking about there was this great documentary in bbc and it's about the women of Russia, mm -hmm. like getting away from abusive partners and stuff like that. I don't think I've seen that. And they've got, um, in Russia, they've got specific shelters and all that for all these women who have uh -huh. been obviously abused by their partners. And like, they've had to have like so many people like have been, like the guys mm -hmm. who are trying to find their wives and that have been like murdered and that, like shot outside because they're trying to get in and get their partners and all that. And I've obviously these that. women have got the children and they don't want anything because they, like you're saying, Aye. in there, it's classed as like a social norm, but there's women in Russia and they're um, sticking up for like we should be equal with you and of course right. they fucking should and these men are still but trying to it's even like that air here as well though like even though it's no spoke about like air here when you're in a relationship mm -hmm. it's people don't oh but it's behind closed doors like you don't you don't pry you don't pry like it's not about prying but it's about uh, taking consideration for someone I, else that's all it is it's I about get safeguarding. Ah, I as get well. you get like a fucking Isa number. Do you know what I mean? Who wants that's to know me. every single thing? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> that's me. I'm a pure Isa. Aye, I'm pure so nosy. nosy. So Aye. nosy. My neighbours are too quiet for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I do like. I'm I'm in a relationship now, and I will admit, I'm not saying I battle my missus before anybody thinks I'm like. No, but like, <laughs> I do have that thing of like, I won't let her pay for anything. Aye, that's the same as my partner. Aye, like, 
and I don't know what it is. It's I don't know if it's that whole kind of old school. I'm the man. I'm. Th- it's not. I'm not doing anything wrong. I just want to take care of my woman. Mm-hmm. That's all. But I wouldn't like. I'm. I'm as easy as going. To like, because it annoys me. Lads. My partner. He's the same. He's like, no. If we're going, like, we have a date night every week, right? Mm-hmm. So like, he's like, no, I'm paying for it, and I'm like, I'm just as equal as you. Aye. I can pay <laughs> for my own stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm a feminist. <laughs> you know what I mean? but he hates it he's like no he's like you can pay for it next time it's always next time uh, and i'm like you really need to get i either. like you really need to get this whole i need to be a pure macho man out your head <laughs> see i think what it is it's definitely a self thing so i think see if i don't pay for it and my missus goes up and she pays for something the person at the till is going to think what the fuck is wrong with him Aye. why is he not paying for her <laughs> that's all it is but at the end of the day that person just doesn't care as long as it's getting paid for mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's just this pure macho man has to be done <laughs> i feel that i'm in the same situation yeah, right. <laughs> but fuck it, isn't it i'm going to just become a pure feminist and let her pay for everything now <laughs> <laughs> see how she likes that she'll hate that because see, oh, if, right. see if my boyfriend made me pay for all the stuff i want i get about 12 starbucks a week you get 12 starbucks a week oh i kind of live with ice what coffee would you get for it just ice coffee aye right. ice white mocha i get a pure basic white bitch drink the mad caramel frappe and all that you know what i mean you should try an iced white mocha brilliant so good all right so good maybe i'll try it i've got a cinema mm. card now huh? have you got one mm? a cinema card Mm-mm. where you get starbucks for cheap really uh, and you get any film you want to see for 15 pound a month Mm. How do you not know this? I don't know. Aye. My brain will only sit still long enough to watch film. <laughs> That's probably how. <laughs> he's honestly, he's on the go for the minute he opens his eyes and then Aye. fights you when you're trying to put him to bed. Brilliant, man. Oh, it's terrible. Aye. So see the feeling of, like, after you spent so long away from your child mm. and mentally getting yourself prepared to become a mother, mm-hmm. see that feeling of, like, getting them back and all that and experiencing what you're doing now bearing in mind i was heavily pregnant with my daughter when i got him back oh were you aye. oh god man so it was like your becoming, hormones all over aye, aye but it was like becoming a first time mom to twins again oh what man like it was i was always very present in my son's life like i would still go to my mom's and stuff mm. like there was the odd time that i would take him air night and stuff like that but he stayed with my mom yeah. But he knew who I was. Like he called me mum, like he would phone me at night time to say goodnight, love you, like we were going days out together and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But he just has normal as I love with my now. Right. I don't love with my mum. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I take the piss out of her that all the time as well. Um but no, his normal is that he lives with her mm. and that's okay. Yeah. Like cause I was having a conversation with him, so he now calls my partner dad, right? right. Like, we were having a conversation before he started calling him dad, and he, he turned around and he's like, Ross, sure I don't have a dad. And Ross was like, um... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, mate. And he was like, but that's okay, because your daddy is dad, which means you're my dad. Yeah. And Ross was like, that's cool, mate. Like, he's never, he's never missed out on anything, like... Regardless if he lived with my mum and I was never there. Mm. He's never missed out on, like, he's still, the, I think he's still the same wee boy as what he would have been if he was with, if, like, I was with Thomas. Yeah, yeah. And, like, he was, Thomas wasn't who he actually is. Like, I think my son would still be the same person, the new. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I get you. Well, he's surrounded by a loving family at the end of the day. Oh, aye. So... Spoiled. No. <laughs> Is he? Why? Aye. He's the first born 35 year in my family. 35 year? Aye. Jesus Christ. My mum's older brother was the last boy on my mum's side in 35 year. That is wild. You're mm-hmm. shooting at all these birds. Aye. Wow. There's hundreds of glasses. <laughs> my nana was like, yes, a boy. <laughs> Aye, man. You must have been like, fuck yes or no. I know. Do you find it easier um, having a boy or a girl? Because obviously you've experienced both. A boy. A boy's easier. Aye. Aye. They always say that because apparently we are a lot less <clears throat> maintenance and stuff like Aye. that. Aye. Like, my wee lassie, her hair's long enough to put in a bobble now. Right. So see, try to get a ball. Like, see if I don't put it in a bobble, her hair's all over the place, right? So Aye. see, try to get it in a bobble. The attitude, she can't even talk yet. 
but I know she's telling me to fuck off <laughs> just by the look that she gives me and the screams and she's for the day she was born she's tested my patience she? <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> just winds you right up oh why she really winds me up but it's because she's got the same attitude as me aye are you a terrible child oh why <laughs> I was actually an alright Wayne it was when I had like a teenager I became mm-hmm. a wee bastard and then I think this is my I think we're all kind of cunty I saw that like you can't cope with all the hormones and like just being a teenager in general but I think this is my karma yep. mm-hmm. I know that's so bad she really is my karma Aye. Aye. see if like, anybody that knows my son knows that he's hard work like right. like I said always on the go hardly listens he's he like, has he got ADHD or something? I don't know no but is he like, just a child Aye. Aye. he's just he's very hyper all the time and he's gone through a wee stage and I know listening Right, so like, or he screams back at you. What? Like, see if I shout at him, he goes, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, calm down. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. I like, so he's gone through that stage now. But see, if anybody thinks that he is my worst child, they've not met your daughter. Daddy is going to bite them right in the arse because uh-huh. oh, I she's terrible already. Rips everybody a bit with the hair. <laughs> See, as soon as she gets close to your hair, that's it. Game over. Aye. Thank God I just got a haircut. I just got extensions put in. I had hair like yours. I'm like, Mm-mm. Extensions? Mm-hmm. I didn't have them. I think I should get them. I think I'd look good. No? No. I think I'd look pretty sexy. I'm just saying. I'm just no. saying. You know I mean? <laughs> no. Leave them for the people that need them. Okay. Um, <laughs> did, but do you have a VLP shot of that? No, but my hair is just ridiculously short. Is it? Aye, it, just, it won't though. grow. I've damaged it far too much. What, be dying it? Bleaching it. There's one time I say in my school who dyed her hair so much, she genuinely became bald. I'm not even kidding. In That's actual me. <laughs> is it? But she wears like wigs and all that now. And I remember, man, she must have had like three different hairstyles in the space of a week. And I was like, mate, how's that possible? Because she went from like long to short to then long. And then I obviously caught on, she, she's heavy baldy. Do you know what Johnny Sins? <laughs> do, you know, do you know who Johnny Sins is? No. Your dad, I don't know what you're talking about then. <laughs> do you don't know who Johnny Sins is? Uh-uh. He's a doctor, fireman, porn star. He's Sorry? actually like one of the biggest porn stars in the world. All right. He's a, he's a mad meme, isn't he, Paul? Back me up here. I'm not a weird guy. The only reason I know who he is is because he's a Oh, <laughs> God. I'm obsessed with him. I can see that. Not in a gay way. It's just that I respect him because he's a doctor on that. Of course. I want to say, no, I was not send you his actual stuff, but I was sending you the memes and that they are funny as fuck. Please don't, don't be send sending me porn. I won't send you porn, I promise. That's so weird. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck me. Yeah, we get a bit more serious now. Off the topic of porn, let's say. Please. Uh, <laughs> So see when you first initially had met Thomas, mm-hmm. you know you were talking about you had that honeymoon period within the first month, mm-hmm. do you just think that was him Grimming getting a me. feel for you oh, to I... find out where he could take advantage? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was showered in gifts and paraded about as if I was the best thing since sliced bread. Mm-hmm. Like I was literally paraded about yeah. every single house in Govan Hill I think I've been in. This is my girlfriend. Oh my god, she's gorgeous. Look at her. This is my girlfriend. Like, so see, when he was taking you to all the various houses, do you think that was him basically showing, showing you off for these people to mm-hmm. bid for you? Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, as a pure, as like, I was one, one of a lot of lassies, like a lot of girls, um, in that house at the one time. We were never all in the house at the one time. But there was at least 13 years in the house at the one time. 13? Aye. Wow. So that's not even all is. You know what's happened to any of the girls? Did they, did they... One of them's dead. No. That's what I was going to say. Did they mm. therefore kill people when they had they, they basically ran the use of them? Well, she was only 13 though when she died. Right. She only just died at the start of the year. Right. So I get a phone call off one of my like, old pals. And she'd said to me, she was like, have you heard? And I was like, have I heard what? Like, what is it? Now, I looked after this, this wee lassie was two when I first met her, like, 
she was a baby, mm-hmm. <laughs> like a baby. Um, I went to her like her first day of school and stuff like that. Like I got her dressed for school and all that in the morning, nursery, like looked after her, gave her a bath, put her in her bed. Like I was basically a mother oh, to this one. Mm-hmm. And then my pal was like, have you heard? And I was like, have I heard what? And she was like, um, so-and-so has passed away. And I was like, who's that? Like, obviously, eight years later, do you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. like, who is that? And she was like, Tony, you know who she is? And then she took me her second name and that was me. I was in tears. I think I get it for about three weeks solid or that. Did it feel like losing your actual child? I like, that's, my partner was like, I don't mean this to come, like, because he's obviously very much like, I've just come into this situation, like, what's going on? Oh, for him to comprehend as well, isn't it? And he was like, I don't mean this to sound bad. He was like, but why are you keeping? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I feel like I've lost a win. I'm grieving a child that isn't even mine, like, but I brought her up. Like, I, I was, I was her mom. like, her mum was sailing her to men at two year old like 18 months she was like that's disgusting like so do you think the only reason she was having children was to make money mm-hmm. that is what happens well i don't want to say in their culture in case it's no but, yeah, but that could, from what i seen around. i mm-hmm. like from what i seen in the family that i was involved with that's what they done like the youngest when that i seen being sold for sex was 18 months and then I was like, well, how did she die? And my pal was like, she was abused that much that her body gave in. Like, her body just stopped working. So I was like, no wonder, though, she's been, been abused for basically the day she was born. Like, mm-hmm. no wonder a wee body couldn't handle it, do you know what I mean? So that was, I think that was like the first time that I really thought to myself, no, I've got to speak up for people that don't have a voice to speak up yeah and that's what kind of made me determined that i was screaming it for the rooftops if i had to mm-hmm. because i never wanted to feel like once i got past like that grieving period i never wanted to feel like that again like that that was horrendous like the worst pain i've ever felt in my life and i'd say to my partner i was like Somebody needs to do something about this. Like, this can he continue to go on. Like, fair enough. If that is part of your culture and that's what you do and, like, in your community, keep it to your community, please. Like, don't involve anybody else, i.e. me. <laughs> yeah, but even at that, like... It shouldn't be happening no, at all. it's like, we talk about with certain countries, like, over in Asia and that, like, the age limit Aye. of sex not is like fucking insane Aye, like, like some of them can be like eight and stuff. nine uh-huh. and stuff like that and it's like how barbaric are we mm-hmm. like we've progressed so far and like you were saying it's still happening on our doorstep mm-hmm. you know what i mean we feel as though we've progressed see if you walk through really. govan hill right there's a light system don't know if you've ever heard of the light system no so red light is for a lassie under 16 right a blue light is for a boy under 16 and a yellow light is for a child like under 10 like child child see if you walk through govan hill you'll see all sorts of lights but you would never notice it in, like until i've told you about it mm-hmm. like i now guarantee if you were ever to find yourself in govan hill for whatever reason all you would see is red blue and yellow lights everywhere remind me not to stand under any of them <laughs> <laughs> no but it's like in windows like so is it like that i'm not meaning it that way but it's like in it like, brothels is it like the amsterdam thing do you mm-hmm. know what i mean like the red light district those various Aye. bits uh-huh. jesus christ mm-hmm. and the, how is this not like because the police are in on it i know what you're gonna ask me the police are all in on it no all of them no obviously that's no a few them. bad eggs and everything Aye. But so that's how it's not i that's the, pushed it mm-hmm because either the police are one paid off and i know that sounds stupid like you only really hear of that in like Lady london Judy. and i <laughs> like stuff All like right. that but the police are paid off the police are pedophiles like i've been raped off two police officers what? in my t- i in my time in govan hill i was raped off two police officers like 
the same police officer that well i only seen one of them once not that excuses the fact mm-hmm. i only seen one of them once and then the other one i seen had a period of six months and he was also the one that used to take me home when i'd been reported missing and have a conversation with my mom in the kitchen after they took me home after raping me so that's why it's, there's nothing done about it because they're either being paid off or they're getting what they want yeah either so way pieces of shit man aren't they just shows man didn't it even like we, we see it all the time like politicians nowadays are mm-hmm. end up like so many of them are now getting caught mm-hmm. wait oh but when is it going to start stemming down and everybody's just going to get fucked and caught and it just shows how much a fucking great and strong woman you are you're coming out and helping everybody i i just don't want it to ever happen to anybody else mm-hmm. like because it's terrifying like i remember the night that i escaped my abuser I, the only thing i had done was a pair of pants and a pair of socks when i jumped out that window and ran for my life you jumped out the window I, at 16 weeks pregnant Jesus. like ran like fuck <laughs> didn't even go in the right direction I ended, up, I, I ended up near Bella Houston Park. Mm-hmm. Okay. My house was the opposite <laughs> direction. Aye. Do you know what I mean? So it just goes to show I was not caring where I was gone. I just needed to get away from him. You like, need any form of safety. I, the fear that was seeding through my body, like amongst all the like adrenaline and like all that, the fear, I will never forget that fear. Ever. Like, Ever. Did you, so see when you were running, did you come across somebody and they helped you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was motors going past me and I'm running in the street, 15 year old, naked, and not one of them stopped. Police cars passed me and not one of them stopped. Do you think they maybe just knew? Aye. Aye. I got to see the street going down towards um, Bailey Houston Park and it's got all the big massive fancy houses with all the trees and stuff like right. that. Got to there and I was running down that street and I seen like a car reversing at a driveway and I just started screaming, help me, help me, help me. And the guy obviously jumped out of his car. He was a taxi driver. He jumped out of his car and he was like, what? are you all right? Like, what, what's going on? Like, who do I need to phone? And I was like, I'm a missing person. My name's Tony McFadden. You need to phone my mom. I need to phone my mom. That's all I kept saying to him. I wasn't caring about the police. I was like, I just, I need to phone my mom. And his, his wife came out with, see, like a throw that you put your dick out. Yeah, yeah. She came out and wrapped that around me and let me phone my mum while you he phoned the police. But it was terrifying. It's two great people, isn't it? Eh? Aye. 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 People, man. I seen him again when we went to court. We weren't really allowed to have any contact. But I seen him again and like mouthed thank you to him. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't care if we're not allowed to talk. He was like, you have scarred me for life. He was like, Thank you, though, because it's made me made aware of what's going on when about me as a taxi driver. He's like, that works nights. Yep. I now know what to look out for. He's like, I don't care if I'm not allowed to talk to you. He was like, you are so fucking brave. Yeah. Like, he's like, I will never. He's like, I'm telling my grand wins about you when they're at an age where they'll understand. And I was obviously greeting. Uh-huh. He was greeting and gave each other a cuddle and stuff like that. And never seen him again after that. Uh, no. but that must feel great that you've changed somebody's life like that so much it does because i'm like well see if i can make one person made aware yeah i've done my job plus it's going to stem do you know what i mean like so you've told him he's going to tell this person that person, mm-hmm. that person and then hopefully it's going to even like you coming on here right it's going to make everybody aware of that area and mm-hmm. hopefully push that message across that we need change here mm-hmm. and we need to get rid of these people it won't though it's Nicola Sturgeon's constituency, is it not? Is that what you call that thing? Aye. Is it, I didn't know it. I'm Aye, not going to lie, like, I hate politics. I never really listen to any or know any of that shit, but is that hers? Eh? Aye, that's hers. And does she take nothing to do with it at all? Nothing to do with it. No. She doesn't She just care. let it run down to fuck, basically. Aye, like, see, if you walk through Govan Hill, there's dirty mattresses with blood and all that way that it. Mm. Be lassies and boys being raped. Aye. Like, I, I've been that person that's had to move a mattress out of house down to the bottom of a close. I've been there, I've done it all. Like, I know what these things mean. Mm-hmm. Like, there's wrappers everywhere, there's 
bottles everywhere. There's see the sunflower seed things oh, right, right. everywhere. Like it's bogging the smell. See the minute you hit the tap at Allison Street on Victoria Road, the smell that hits you is phenomenal. By the way, it is disgusting. Aye, uh-huh. it hits you like a slap in the face. But but what was the like? When did that happen? Like when was the first thing? Because surely it wasn't like that when on. I was there. No. It just like went that. down and down and Why? Down. Why? It's went pure downhill. Um, the smell wasn't there when I was there. Mm. Because I wouldn't, I'm quite a hygienic person. <laughs> I hate all that. Um, the smell was never there. Certain parts of Govan Hill I wouldn't go into because it, it, it smelled a wee bit bad. Right. But now, like when I was doing my documentary with Sky News, I was walking in the street with my jacket or my nose because it was so horrendous I like my eyes were watering and all that it was bad and I've, I'm no sensitive to smells I didn't mm. like that I've got two veins I've nah, changed shitty nappies do you know what I mean <laughs> like I don't have like I'm no sensitive to all that but my eyes were watering my nose was running I was gagging it was horrible mm. like I don't even know why they've got bins down there because they use the streets the street. as a bin do you remember the mad guy that was cutting about Governor? Alex Kearney or right. Cairns or something. You can't tell me that, but where he's walking by the guy and the guy, he's seen the guy's following him. Uh-huh. And he goes, I don't keep up me, big man. And it's obviously just a normal guy uh, walking by with a short bag and toilet paper and that in his hand. So that was like, like took a bit of credibility away from what he was saying. Mm-hmm. Like when he did that. Well, see, I never seen anything like that. I never, I never seen anything like that. I... I've been told about him, obviously, but everybody's like, oh, he just disappeared off the face of the earth. I like, he's nowhere now. Like, there was a point where he was everywhere on Facebook. Like, he was he was basically just doing that thing, like, similar to what you're doing. He's trying to make awareness and mm-hmm. change a town and make it better. But there is, there's bits where, like, he generalised, like, you, you have that great thing where you're saying it's not all them, mm-hmm. right? But he, at I times... I will never tar everybody with the same brush because... No, because obviously, good and bad people, people everywhere. There was some of his pals, God love them, actually went against him for me. Like they were my witnesses in court. No mm-hmm. his I right. I will never court. tarnish everybody with the same brush, like Yeah. Cause there is there's there's good and bad in every culture, there's good and bad in every oh. race. Do uh, you know what I mean? Like I mean I'm ginger, there's a lot of bad ginger. <laughs> my sister's ginger too. <laughs> I, I dyed my hair ginger. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um but no, like there's good and bad in everybody, like yeah. And I would never want to be, like, I'm obviously white. I would never want to be tarnished with the same brushes. I don't know. Adolf Hitler. There you go. Great guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but what I'm saying with him, um, he was going on and he was basically just generalizing, like, everybody here is doing this. Everybody, mm. everybody. Not saying there's good and bad parts and stuff, right? And then what happened with that video I told you? He got kind of made into a meme. Right. And that's what happened, like... Because he did something like that, it basically tarnished everything that he had. General, his message, general message was, we need to improve this place, but he went about it in a kind of terrible way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel like with you, you are, you are really cleared up in your main There's right. a fine line between like, I can joke about it mm-hmm. because I went through it. Like, I lived that horror. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, right. if I want to make, like, you've seen my TikTok, like, um, <laughs> you've got to. <laughs> It's also, um, I do it all the time, like, I did generally love my dad, right? Mm-hmm. That's why it's called the Fast Podcast, because he's dead. <laughs> right? I but gathered. Like, it's kind of like a homage to him, mm. essentially, right? But I did love my dad a lot, but I will, like, when I do stand up on that as well, like, I make a lot of jokes about my dad being dead, and it is, you're just masking that kind of emotional hurt mm-hmm. with a joke. So, do right, you're allowed to do it. Like, nobody should frown upon you go, you can't make jokes about it. You there should. was one of my one of my TikToks about my trauma that went viral, and it was the uh, what's that song? That why would I keep her to myself? Fuck's <laughs> sake! <laughs> and everybody like in my comments were like, "I'm here for the dark humor and all that." And it, but then there was other people that was like, "Oh my goodness, I've been through the same. How dare you?" And I'm like, "Babes, I'm not talking about your trauma. I'm talking uh, about mine." <laughs> like, but also, like you're making a joke about it, and you're trying to make. If you don't laugh, you're great. About it. Ah, you're trying to make like, a bit of light situation. Mm-hmm. And I assume you would have known that through, like, well, see with 
you were talking about you had to obviously push your child away to focus mm-hmm. on yourself and your own mental health with like throughout some form i assume you went to therapy no you, you didn't go to therapy for a wee bit and then i was like fuck this i'm not gonna Aye. listen how come because like see the hang way like sexual abuse is you're always meant to feel like it's your fault what and I, that was what the therapist was doing uh-huh like you're always meant to feel like it's your fault you're mm. always meant like well what were you wearing oh my god were you intoxicated um, like you're always made to feel like it's your fault and i would turn into my my like psychiatrist and i was like i'm gonna punch your cunt in so to stop myself from getting the jail i'm leaving Mm, true so paul's an actual therapist right and paul will i could literally see the disgust in him when somebody like that is asking you that question Mm -hmm. you always notice that don't you um well you will definitely notice that I've seen it within like certain documentaries and that like a guy will ask, I bet she must have been wearing this, that's why they done it. I'm like, no mate, that's definitely not. See it. the very first time I was raped, I was in my school uniform. So <laughs> it's not always what you're wearing, no. and I was not intoxicated either. And I wasn't leading anybody on because I was thirteen year old. Situation. I <laughs> literally bundled into the back of a car. Yeah. And taken to a house where you don't have a choice in this, you're doing this for me, mm-hmm. or I'm bartering you. Aye. Or your mum and your mum and sister. Aye. Yeah. Like, it got to the point where my punishment was being gang raped off him and all his pals. <laughs> like, that was my punishment. So, either way, like, you were just getting raped regardless. Mm-hmm. Like, regardless if it was punters or my boyfriend and his pals and his mm-hmm. family members like there was never a day in all the years that i was with thomas that i wasn't raped never one day because regardless if he was my boyfriend or no i got to the point where i didn't want to have sex with him anymore like i now as an adult as a 22 year old adult associate having sex as work you still? I still to this day. Like, I still associate that as work. Because there was any time before it, mm-hmm. there was some form of payment. Uh-huh. Never to me. But no, I get what you mean. I now have, like, anxiety when it comes to having sex. Mm-hmm. Like, I've either got to be absolutely steaming or just do it for the sake of doing it. So there's no pleasure anymore? No, nah, none at all. Course is not obviously none at time. all. I've can honestly say there's been three times in my whole life where I've actually enjoyed having sex, mm-hmm. but that's it. That's crazy, man. And because that must affect your relationship because <clears throat> really, sex is a huge part mm-hmm. in relationship because it's through intimacy with the person Aye. you love. How does that? How do you feel then with your partner? Does he kind of struggle with stuff like that? I'm kind of lucky. Because my partner, he's very understanding. Mm-hmm. Like, need somebody like I, he's very understanding. Like, regardless if he wants to have sex or no, he's kind of like, "Are you alright?" Yeah, of course. Like, and even when we do have sex, he's still very much like, "Make sure, like, are you sure? Like, I don't want you to do it just because I want to. Like, we can stop. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm very, very lucky that way. Like, he is very understanding." Mm-hmm. So it takes a great man to be like that. Oh, I like because it's I've been with many uh, guys before him that have been like, but you're my bird. That's not that. That's and I'm like, but that doesn't. That's it not doesn't the matter. Like, <laughs> is consent not hot for you, mate? Like it should be. It's it's mental, like, and I feel like that's an hang that needs to be spoke about more. Mm. As just because you're in a relationship with somebody does not mean you need to have sex with them. You're not entitled to sex. Uh huh. Like, that doesn't mean that you now own my body. No chance. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't get to dictate what I can and can I do. Mm-hmm. Or when I do it and when I don't. A relationship, this is how I basically, with mine, mm. um, I was in an abusive relationship before, mm. like, with a female. Uh, but it was very violent and stuff and very mentally draining and tortured by it. And it took me a while. So my current girlfriend... Um, I don't mean to say I fucked her about. I didn't fuck her about as in like I was going out and sleeping with other aye. people. I just mean like... Aye, but you push them away. Like I, I've done it. Like, there's one of my exes, don't get me wrong, still 
no love on me bitch right that's the wrong word to kind of use but like have all the time in the world for mm-hmm. him he's a brilliant guy was so patient with me and i fucked him about royally <laughs> like because he was the nicest guy other than my partner he was the nicest guy that i'd ever been with right. like done everything for me like i never wanted for nothing with him mm-hmm. and i was like there's an ulterior motive here get away from me Course. stay away from uh, me why are you, you being so nice with, um thomas at the time mm-hmm. he was giving you everything you wanted and then boom it switched mm-hmm. uh, of course so i was like that you better stay away from me yeah and i always went for the type of guys that would treat me like shit because it was all i was used to do yeah. you know what i mean it was all i was used to so like don't get me wrong i've spoke to him since and i've been like listen i apologize for everything that i done like i couldn't sit and name them one by one because no, I, I would be here for like the rest of my life but everything that i ever done and any time i ever hurt your feelings i for the bottom of my heart apologize mm-hmm. and he's like listen i get it he's like it's cool i'm over it like i never hated you to begin with so it doesn't matter and it's the same with my partner like when i first got with him i was kind of like nah like that's why we were on and off for ages because i was like no getting too Which close to you I, I oh, I, like even with my pals and stuff like that like i'm kind of I latch onto people because I'm like, if you're a good person, mm. I will latch onto you. I'm fucked. I'm, like, fucked. <laughs> like, I'm a terrible person, sorry. <laughs> same. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's like the minute I know somebody's genuine, mm. I will do everything in my power to keep them as my pal. Yeah, because you need genuine people around you because you haven't experienced it. On the other hand, I still have pals. Not anymore. I've just got all the laugh, but I still had pals that would bring me down for my weight, my abuse, like everything, like mm. would make me feel less than to make their self their, their self feel better. Yeah. Right. But I still clung on to them because it was a trauma bond. Uh-huh. Like I was trauma bonded to yeah, them. Yeah. So I see them, her. <laughs> <laughs> one person. I, one no. person. Like I was trauma bonded to her. Mm-hmm. So that was like a ten year friendship. Ten years. Uh, I and I just I, last year I just I washed my hands there. I was like, I'm done with you. See, it's we're a very hard this. thing to do. Like I had that I have a lot of had a lot of friends during mm-hmm. it and it is true. See, once you're trying to it's not really similar, but see once I'm like doing this, mm-hmm. like the podcast and stand up and trying to achieve a particular dream. It is like I'll beat your you do shite. end up distancing I, I'll beat people. your shite I, or it's like I mean, come on mate you can miss that that day I, come on do this like they're not actually pushing you towards your dream they're trying to like devalue it and take it away mm-hmm. so I, I was have, like Carl like I was pregnant with my daughter um, I was going to say something but um, that's how people will <laughs> know who she is so yeah. it doesn't matter um, like I was pregnant with my daughter and she was like buying my daughter things and like oh i can't wait to take her overnight and i can't wait to take her out and i'm like she's i'm only like five months pregnant like <laughs> you have a long while to go uh, like chill out uh-huh like but it was very much like i was carrying her baby like that's the way she made me feel she is it because feel like she felt she'd seen what you had she was jealous of my child she no was, but do you feel as it would be like because of what you had done with your son she's maybe thinking oh maybe i'll get the daughter do you think aye, that aye? Aye. aye very much so like she was jealous of my, she admitted that she was jealous of my daughter and i was like why she, are you could you not have kids is that was that no she's got kids what, what the fuck we don't have them though. Jealous? Oh. um she was jealous of my daughter because my daughter would take away the attention from her that you would give to her. Aye. Ah, right. Aye. So, like, she admitted it to me. Fair enough. She admitted it, fuck. Better Aye. than going round your back, being sly about everything, and maybe mistreating your daughter at times. You know what I mean? You'd rather her be up front tell you. And you just get that was when I cut her off. I was like, I'm no having somebody it's jealous, of, jealous baby. of a child, into it? I know. Aye, an unborn baby. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, an, an unborn child. Like, I nearly lost my daughter 13 times through my pregnancy. What? Aye. And they, at one point they'd say to me, they were like, we can just do a termination, like, save yourself the hassle. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no. And then my daughter was born at 39 weeks. 39 weeks? 7.4. 
I was right. like, oh, why? And that was yours. It was telling me that she was got to be like a premature mm. baby, got to be like four or five pun. Yeah. And she's seven, Aye. four. Aye. Aye. <laughs> I was like, it just goes to show you that, like, but when I was still pals with her, she was, she would tell me like, I think you should just get an abortion, Tony. What? I like, and that's when I was just like, do you know what? Like, I can't do this anywhere. Like, you are literally trying to make me choose between you and my child. Aye. And my child. Isn't born. I, but my child will come before anybody. Yeah. Like, I'd, my child comes before my mom. Mm-hmm. And that is saying a lot for me. It's a different kind of love. Mm-hmm. Like, I love my mom because, well, she brought me into the world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's been there for me through everything. But I brought that baby into the world. Like, I now know how my mom feels when she looks at me and my sister. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, you, you need to go. Like, you, you need to go. And that's um, like you were saying, you attract those toxic people, mm-hmm. and now you're actually seeing the signs Aye. like quicker, and you're getting rid of them. Mm-hmm. That just shows growth for you. Well, it's hard. Aye. That trauma bond was really hard to get rid of. Of course, because was... she was the one that I first, the very first day I met Thomas, that was her. Was that her? That I was Aye. Aye. That I was Aye. with. Like, she... did she know at the time what everything was going on? No, because mm-hmm. you couldn't tell nah. for their safety. safety. Mm-hmm. I didn't want. And she was always bitchy anyway. <laughs> like, I remember me and her went missing. We didn't. We were just, we were mad way in our house. <laughs> like, at like 13. Don't get me wrong. Like, I was raped in that house. And she witnessed that. Um, so then when the police found us, I'd obviously told the police what had happened. And she turned around and went, never happened. And then... You maybe, th- maybe think, but as a child, she didn't want to accept that time to her friend. Mm-hmm. No? Because the start of the year, I've still got the messages, the start of the year, um, she messaged me and she's like, I did watch you get raped. And I was like, why did you not tell the police? And she was like, because it's not my place to get involved between you and your boyfriend. And I was like, I was a child, like, we were children. Yes. He was an adult. Like, that is your place to get involved when I'm a, a, in danger. Like, and you're the friend. Uh-huh. You need to be there for them. And after that, she went with my full school, um, telling everybody that I'd been raped and all that. So I was then in school called a dirty rape victim. And I told you to be so cruel. Oh, man, I, man. like, I was called all sorts. And then when I fell pregnant with my son, it was um, just pure vulgar shit. Yeah. But of course, like, she is a... When you're that age, like you don't even, I personally, when I was your age, I didn't even understand what it meant. You know what I mean? Oh, and I was, I, came, a, I, I was came. a horrible bastard. Oh, like, man. I'll be the first person that put my hands up and admit it. Like, especially during an act of addiction, mm-hmm. I was horrendous to people. Like, I would lie, I would steal, like, everything. I would do everything that I could just to be able to get drugs. Like, Aye. why? Anything. Was that just escapism taking the drugs mm-hmm. basically yeah to get away from trauma mm-hmm. i was an alcoholic by the time i was 14 okay. i was addicted to coke. i not just have in scotland no, I'm well, true. <laughs> <laughs> i was a, no. addicted to coke by the time i was 14 was that given to you by i was yeah um i was addicted to mandy mdma by the time i was 17 what? i like it was... how did you how did you come clean then from all that? When I feel pregnant with my daughter. Well, yeah. no, that's a lie. When I feel pregnant in September of 2020 and I lost that baby, yeah. I didn't know I was pregnant though. Uh-huh. Um, and it wasn't until I lost that baby that I was like, I could have had an hour when. Mm-hmm. But I'm too coked up at my eyeballs for my body to even... Be able, to, I, yeah. be able to keep a baby alive and I just I went teetotal that was me I went teetotal just cold turkey instantly yeah mm-hmm. did you have much like oh I'm choking for that addicted mm-hmm. like really really my mum locked me in a room yeah <laughs> like my mum never mad, locked mad me in my room all that? I, she never locked me in my room because my mum didn't really she's not know Joseph <laughs> <laughs> she didn't really know about my addiction like she knew I took drugs and stuff like that, but mm. she didn't know how bad it was. So I moved in with my mum, and like that was my because my son was there, my sister was there. I'm not gonna take drugs in front of them. 
and I'm not then got to leave them to go and take drugs. Yeah. Like, so I knew that for me to become clean, that was what I had to do. And so then, mature, like, thought-wise. And then I fell pregnant with my daughter in December, so that's that baby in September was a blessing. Yeah. It was a wake-up call. She needed a loss to realise, mm-hmm. basically. Yep. And... Like, but I know I was a horrible person during active addiction. Of course you would be, but like, you did so much trauma mm-hmm. and you're having to take all this stuff. To... But this is my thing. Like, everybody that I've ever done bad in my past always pure hoods it against me. And I'm like, I apologise, like, wholeheartedly. I apologise to you for anything that I did to you. Yeah. Nah, you're a fucking liar. You're a fucking... Fi- so do you think because of the damage you caused with that, people don't believe you in what actually happened? Mm-hmm. People don't believe that I'm a good person now as well. Mm-hmm. Like they Personally, would... you don't seem like a cunt. You seem just somebody who's obviously went through something so traumatic and you tried to deal with it mm-hmm. and you didn't know what to do, so you took a lot of drugs. And I was people, a ween. <laughs> I mean, people take drugs, but like you're a completely different person. Mm-hmm. You are not you. Aye. And like, you never really got to experience you. Do you know what I mean? I never had a childhood. Like, Aye. see my teenage years... Didn't have because I was first raped when I was 13. Mm-hmm. Had my son at 16. And then was in active addiction the rest of my teen years. Yeah. And only got clean when I was what? 21? Aye. Mm-hmm. So recent. Aye. It is aye. So I, I never had that whole like going and getting mad with it in a field with your pals. I never had any of that. Yeah, any time you were drunk was escapism or mm-hmm. when you were getting sexually abused. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do understand from those people's points of... Like, oh, I You may 100%. have done something so bad, but they need to also come to an understanding of the mental issues that you suffered from what occurred. Mm-hmm. They may not forgive you for what you've done, but they can understand. Do you know I'm not I mean? asking for forgiveness. No. Like, personally, with it sounding too much like I can't, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care because, like, yes, I hurt you and I apologise for hurting you. But you're no important in my life. Like, if you really were important in my life, you would be in my life. Yeah. But you're no. So I don't really care if you forgive me or no Mm -hmm. but i do apologize to you i've said it a million times like a million times to people i've said it on my social media i've said it on lives like i've said it in in person when i've seen people like i've actually approached people and been like i don't know if you remember me but i remember you and i want to apologize for xyz yeah do you know what i mean 90 percent of the time they're like oh like it's fine like it doesn't matter like i know you were going through a lot blah 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 then there's that one we group of people that just want to be mean girls all their life and they just want to tarnish what you're trying to I, create here mm-hmm. mm. like one of the lasses has went on a live saying that i was never abused and that my son's my brother and all that like she just fucked him. i know like he text us? she's she's gone to the extreme like i always wonder what what is the her as a woman as well should like understand like obviously i understand as a man but i'm meaning like as a woman like mm-hmm. it is a lot of times like dangerous at nights and stuff like that do you know what i mean like and you're trying to spread awareness but she's of the first things. like on all our social media she's the first to put um if you can be anything in this world be kind, be kind. Uh, it's cool it's, they're <laughs> like... always like that they're always like i talk about it like i've got loads of guys on i don't follow them anymore like i had a complete wipe out my instagram because i went mm-hmm. i'm on this too much and there's too many arseholes i was the same with tiktok like i had to take myself away from tiktok it's brutal but i had, had to delete the whole app i have not i need to use it for this and that is like my biggest promo too but i had like loads of guys who will like post tyson fury quotes about depression and mm-hmm. stuff like, that, like robin williams and that oh be kind to check up on your bros and all that right and i'll literally see those same guys like on nights out going like that like fucking this guy's pure depressed they know this and that do you know what i mean like slagging depression mm-hmm. it's all just for show that's all it is like oh who let me put this up so i can get an extra like on my instagram not actually they'll, they'll be the they're first the type day. of people that have live laugh love and they're loving <laughs> that's okay that stuff in it 
or splash splash in their bathroom. Uh, they are they are the type of like people. I don't have that one in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but they are the type of people, like Aye. so hypocritical. Ah, they'll post that about check up your bros, mm-hmm. and they won't check in their bros. That's exactly. Like there's one lassie in particular. I won't name her, but <laughs> as much as I really want to. But anyway, like there's one lassie in particular that's like um. She'll talk about my wane all the time. Right. Like, your wane's bogging. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't even know my wane. Last time you seen my wane, it was like three months old. Aye. Okay. Like, your dad's... Eh, your dad. Your wane's got to end up like his dad. Or that. Like, she's vile. Just but battle. she's a mother herself. Oh, that's what... <clears throat> that's what gets me more than anything. Mm. I'm like, you have a child. <laughs> like, There's some that's... It is all just down to, like how unhappy people are mm-hmm. that they have to project on others that's oh, what right. it is and we get it all the time here like we genuinely do like, i always try and encourage everybody like i'm i want a, a pure shitty job right where i'm like out in vans delivering fucking furniture to people hopefully mm-hmm. not to govern anytime soon it would be nice but um i'll ask these guys like they've been in this job for like 15 20 years and i'll genuinely say to them, but, but what did you want to do like you mm-hmm. must have had something that you wanted to do and pursue it and it's always the same thing. It's like, oh, I bet something happened. This got in the way, like comfortability. That's mm-hmm. all it is. I was getting a paycheck. And before I knew it, 15, 20 years went by. And that would generally be what that woman is. She's not happy because she's not doing her purpose mm-hmm. or what she truly loves. And that's all it is. She's raging that I'm um, speaking right now. Like, Aye. because I, I didn't for years. Eight years went by. And I sat like, so scared of him. So scared. I was still in love with my abuser. For about three years after I left him, really? like madly in love with him. See if he phoned me and went and come back, and I went back. Really? Aye, I was that trauma bonded to him. Like, God, man. oh, I like that trauma bond was the hardest thing mm-hmm. for me to break. And then I obviously met my partner, fell in love with him, fell out of love with Thomas. And that's how I broke that trauma bond. But I, Ada went back to him. Ada went back to Thomas. If he'd phoned me within that, that space of time, if he'd phoned me and went come home, I'd been like, I am on my fucking way. See, within those three years, that three year span, did your mum know? Did you, when did you tell your mum then? Uh, the night I escaped. Was it the night of escaping, right? right. My mum already, for like six months or something before I left Thomas, my mum knew. She didn't know. She had a suspicion. Mm-hmm. And she kept telling me, if there's something going on, you need to tell me. And I was like, yeah, you're talking shit. Like, there's nothing going on. You're just being paranoid. Like, all this. But... Back of your mind, do you just think the safety of your mum? Aye. So I was just like, mum, get a grip. Like, mm-hmm. there's nothing going on. You're so paranoid. Like, and then that night, she was like, I've been waiting on this phone call. She's like, I'm on my way. And that was it. I know. That was See that it. word trauma bond? Mm-hmm. I'd genuinely never heard of that until you had said it. And really? It, I, it clicks back to, so see when I'd finished with uh, my ex. Mm-hmm. So it took me a lot, like, now you're talking about where your mum had the suspicion. But um, my mum had literally said to me, like, you've not, like, been out with your pals for, like, two years. Aye. You're, you're with us all the time. Like, you've left a job. Like, because I'd came home one night and... Um, she chased me around uh, with a knife because she couldn't find an iPad. She couldn't find an Sick. iPad and she went ballistic at me and went, where the fuck's the iPad? I went, I didn't even know he had an iPad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Chased me around with a knife and I'm in this closet. Obviously, I'm a big guy, but I'm, I'd am i never hurt a woman because in my past had been, fat. my father had abused my mum and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I would never like have abused a woman. And I'd never felt, see, that love connection. Aye. And that's what I'm talking about with you. So I found it with, with this one lassie who therefore had mentally abused me. Mm-hmm. And I'd went home one night, and it was after that night, and my mum, I'm usually always up, ready to go to work. And it hit like 10 o'clock, and usually I'd start at like 6. And she's like knocking on my door like, why are you not at work? Like, you should be there. And that, and I had to just broke down, Aye. like, to her. And basically confessed everything and i had ended it all with her but i had went back because i had lo- i loved that feeling of the trauma bond that mm-hmm. you're talking about and i'd went back and i'd got that way 
she manipulated me to that extent of I'll come see you, I won't see you, stuff like that, right? And it had got so bad that I became obsessed with her. Mm-hmm. Even like the feeling of I was the same comfort. Mm-hmm. See, even I know it sounds pure weird, right? But see, even the smellies after shave mm-hmm. or the soundies voice or like I I don't even I don't even know like how warm he was when he used to cuddle me like things like that I, I like I remember uh uh-huh, like I remember craving that so bad after I left him to the point where I would have went back to continue being abused mm-hmm. just to feel that and then like this fucked up affection I, that's and then like I don't know one day I just stopped thinking about him and it wasn't until like a couple of weeks later that I was like oh I was the same, oh. honestly. Like, <laughs> I've literally. not thought about that. Like, it's not until somebody else brings it up that you're like, oh, fuck. I remember them, aye. Aye, oh, like, oh, fuck. Aye. That's fucking nuts. But trauma bonds are... Oh, they're strong. Oh, aye. Very strong. Uh, aye. Like, I've never felt, an, like you said, an obsession like that in my mm. life. Like, I found myself buying. He used to wear it was when Paco Ban 1 million was about. Ooh. Right? <laughs> I remember buying a bottle a one million just so like and spray it about my room. Aye. Aye. Just so it smelled mm-hmm. familiar familiarizing sound. Aye. Smell. Words. I can't speak today. And then <laughs> I ended up that was my biggest PTSD trigger. Is it? Mm-hmm. Thank God I'm not wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a completely like blackout start having panic attacks and stuff like that. Like even you just suffer from it now? Oh, I. A lot? Oh, I. Yeah. Like, I get flashbacks all the time. Like, the last, in fact, last night, I was, I don't smoke in my house. Right. So I was outside having a fag. And I was just sitting there, like, night time. I love night time. I'm pure night hawk, right? Okay. Sitting out, like, just listening. And the next minute, I just seen Thomas walking towards me and clocked me in the nose. But see that way, like, have you ever been hitting the nose? No, I won't. See that feeling that spread right through your face? Mm -hmm. Like, I'd just jump up off the step, ran in the house and was like that to Ross. He just hit me. And Ross was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, Thomas just hit me. And obviously Ross jumped into action and he's like, you're fine. It was just a flashback. And I was like, but I can feel it. Like, that feeling of getting hit in the face and like that like throbbing through your face like I felt that and that's what I says to him I was like I I can feel it he's like I know you can he was like but you're fine and he had to come and stand outside me while I had a fag to calm myself down PTSD is that bad do you feel it you physically feel it Mm -hmm. like I see when I have like my night terrors and stuff like that like I can feel like horns over my body and like can feel his breath like thomas's breath on me and all that it, it gets really bad it gets really it's bad that the brain naturally like, can still mm-hmm. like make you feel all that man. like can still smell aye. like the coffee on his breath and all that like i it, it gets really bad like my doctors are pure refusing me they put me on any like antipsychotics anymore because they feel like when I was on my antipsychotics, they made me worse. Mm. Was it more they triggering? They did. Oh, aye. Triggering. Like, I couldn't, there was a point where I never left my house. Aye. Aye. I had to give my way in, my two wains to my mum for a week while I got my shit sorted. Because I was like, I'm no, I can't do this. Like, every two minutes, regardless of where I went in my house, I could either see him, hear him, or smell him. And I was like, I cannot do this anymore. K- took myself off all my medication, and I was fine. I always say that um, I'm very bad with depression and see when I was on like medication mm-hmm. it never ever got to the stage of like oh I'm cured mm-hmm. it was always the numb feeling and see when I came off them it made me like everything it was as if I just locked it all in mm-hmm. for like a period of time say like three months and then I would come off them and it, the lock would go off and I Aye. would go off the fucking rails with it yep like all every emotion of like sadness, depression, everything would just spiral right into my dome. Uh-huh. And see, once I stopped taking them, and I slowly focused, like I started like, therapy stuff like that. I know it didn't work for you, but 
Like, Aye, it, it does, it different, different things yeah. work for different people. It but worked for me, um, and once I started addressing proper issues, rather than I was just never allowed to talk about my issues, but because it was an ongoing investigation, like I was never actually allowed to. So they would be like, "How are you feeling?" And I would be like, "I don't know. I might kill myself, for instance." Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Because I was abused. Oh, we can't talk about that. Well, why ask me how I'm feeling then, and why I'm feeling like that? Do you know what I mean? And then it would be like, but did it? Well, she is like, I tell you, would you not have an ethical right to discuss that? You would. To see the person you had there, an absolute asshole of a person. I was never allowed to talk about it. It was we. Is it maybe because it would? I know this is getting straight up line of duty here, but maybe because the police were in on it, they get this therapist in on it, everybody in on it. Probably. Aye. Probably. But I was working with a therapist at the Sandyford Council in the service thing right. at the top of the town. Um, and I was never allowed to talk about it. We can't Why? speak about that. But you should, because that's addressing the issue, <laughs> like the trauma. That's what you'd need to do. That's. I honestly still say to this day that that is why I fell into addiction. Because you weren't allowed to talk about it? Mm-hmm. So I suppressed, I suppressed all the, the feelings where I be high every now and again. And also see the subtle words of you can't talk about it. Mm-hmm. It subconsciously go, subconsciously go in the back of your head where you're mm-hmm. not allowed to talk about it at all, like ever. Aye. So then like when anybody would ask me any questions about it, I'd be like, oh, I don't remember. There you go. Don't know. Not like don't talking know. about that, actually. Aye. Like there's still things that I think I've suppressed that much that I don't remember. And it's not until, like, I start talking about it that I'm like, oh, and this happened, and oh my god, and that happened, and oh my god, and this happened. Like, it's like a domino effect. Yeah. Like, but there is a, a shit ton of stuff that I still don't remember. Like it's so suppressed, mm-hmm. that's all. Yeah. Like. And I really hope that doesn't all come out in the world and you, you go spiral down. I don't it, think man, it will. Honestly. I don't think it will. You seem very strong now, do you know what I mean? It's because got I've a got a place. good support system. Yeah. Run about me as well, like, I've got all my family that I need. You've got love now, do you know Aye. what I mean? True love. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. Cheesy as it sounds, I know I sound very gay saying that, but it is, that's like everything you need. And I personally, like, see with my girlfriend now, like, that mm-hmm. I know, now know what love is. Aye. And you will know that with your partner too. Mm-hmm. My biggest thing is I'm still alive. Yeah. There's many lassies out there that have been through that that are not. Mm-hmm. So every day for the rest of my life, I will thank whoever the hell it is that was looking near me. Yeah. Because I'm still here and I'm still able to run about a park with my Wayne and read my story and bath him. And there's people out there that, well, lassies and guys out there that will never experience having Wayne's because they've either killed themselves because of it or they've been killed. Yeah. Edit. So I think that's the only thing that I've kind of, that, that's kept me gone really, is the fact that, well, no, I'm still alive. Like, even when two, people. Two very, very great reasons to live. Oh, why? Oh, why? Like, everybody always says to me, like, what's your coping mechanism? Mm. And I'm like, I'm still alive. That's all. Yeah. Don't have a coping mechanism. All I know is that I'm still here yep. and I'm still able to tell my story. There's many a people out there that aren't able to tell their story anymore. And I hope with what we're doing here right now and what you're continuing to do with Sky and you've got documentary mm-hmm. and everything, I hope it really does just shine that light and make these women come out as well mm-hmm. and feel more comfortable. Because mm-hmm. the only bit of advice I'd ever give anybody that's in that situation is regardless of what they're threatening you with or who they're saying they're going to hurt, just tell somebody. Mm-hmm. Because nine times out of ten, they're not as big and bad as what they make out that they are. They really are not. They're in fact scared they're terrified that you are going to tell somebody and their whole operation's got to come crashing down my abuser fled the country three years after i fled him so you know i mean he's he was nowhere near as big and bad as what i thought he was or what he made it to be so just tell somebody like even if it's i don't know a teacher in school or it's not the janitor <laughs> <laughs> Or some, I don't know, your local shop or whatever. like Something you feel comfortable Uh-huh. With. An adult, preferably. But 
anybody that you feel comfortable with because I so wish that I had just said to my mum we need to move but I remember my mum saying to me Tony we can run away <laughs> like we, we can run away that all you need to say is we need to run and we'll go and I was like no what are you talking about you just thought they would find you mm-hmm. yeah. and I was trauma bonded to him yep that word that phrase again I know that is but that, like that is the it whole is. The whole thing, I was trauma bonded to my abuser. Yeah. Like, regardless of what way you try and spin it, it's a trauma bond. You get so used to something that... It feels right I normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. You don't... You then don't realise that... Hold on a minute, this is not the way I'm supposed to be treated. You just... That's the way that you are treated, so you just expect it. Like, we going forward... With anybody, i.e. relationships, friendships, anything. Yeah. Should be treated right regardless mm-hmm. and put in all aspects of life. Oh, why? Yeah, but honestly, this has been mind-blowing by the, mm-hmm. this podcast, man, and you are a very great and strong woman. Thank you. And your, your message is insane. Like, definitely, man. Like, pff, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <At the> end, <laughs> I'm just so blown away by it all, man. But honestly, I wish you nothing but the best, and you know I'll be there supporting you regardless. In Thank any, you very much. Any form. But thanks a lot for watching, fuckers.